Okay, so in this video, basically, I'll be explaining how normalization works. And because we have the response sheets uh, and we get the uh, score calculator live every year, we get a lot of response sheets. So I actually have a lot of experience in making these kind of estimates. Okay, now there are two things that you have to think about when we get the response sheets. Okay, one is the scaling, the other is the percentile. I think our scaling will be absolutely on point because the estimates that we make are very less as far as scaling is concerned. Percentile, we make some more guesses, some more estimates. So percentile might go slightly like off but uh, scaling will be completely on point because the estimates we make are very limited and whatever estimates we make are obvious estimates so we make normal guesses based on it we get it okay for you to understand scaling what we normally do is remember that scaling is per section so every section the scaling is done individually okay that is the first thing that you have to remember many people have uh, some misconceptions about it they think that okay all the sections are scaled uh, cumulatively that is not the case every section is scaled individually now, the process that is followed for scaling of quant is the same as that of verbal, is the same as that of LRDA. So for the sake of this, let us assume that we are only focusing on scaling of quant so that you will understand it. Now, when you are looking at quant, uh, from a big picture standpoint, you can think that scaled score is a constant into your raw score plus another constant. That is, if you are looking at your quant score from a particular slot, okay, for everybody in that particular slot, this k and this k1 will be the same, okay. The only thing that will vary is the raw score. That is, for everybody in slot 1, quant, these two constants will be the same. The constants will be different for verbal. The constants will be different for LRDI, okay. So basically what we need is, there are 9 permutations, 3 sections, three slots in each of this to figure out the scaling what we essentially need are these two constants okay that is total we need 18 constants to get a perfect understanding of scaling okay this might seem complex but at the end of the day remember that for us if we figure out the raw score to scale score of for two people in a particular slot it will be just a linear equation we can solve it and calculate the value of k and k1 okay just roughly for you to understand okay another way to look at it is the actual formula for scale score, they call it R some hyphen something. This is equal to raw score minus G1 into a particular constant. I'll tell you what this constant is later. Plus G. This is the formula that is used in the sheet, in the PDF. Okay. This is the scale score. Again, we are looking only at scale score of quant. We'll do the same thing for others also. So let us just understand how scaling works in quant. Okay. So scale score in quant is equal to your raw score minus g1. What is this g1? g1 is basically the mean plus the standard deviation of everybody in that particular slot. Okay. Into a constant k, this I'll tell you how this constant is calculated later. Okay. That is basically dependent on how the toppers have done across the three slots and how the toppers have done in your particular slot. That is basically the ratio. So one way to look at it is if toppers in your slot have outperformed quite a lot as compared to toppers across the three slots, this value will be less than one, okay. But it is basically not uh, super intuitive to explain how this is actually arrived at. Just assume that that is a constant k which will be close to one. This will be either 1.1 or 1 or 0 0.9, okay. It will be something which is very close to one, the way it is actually formed, okay. That will impact the scaling, okay. And this g is basically the mean and standard deviation across all the three slots. Okay. Now for us to get it, what we do is when we get a lot of response sheets, suppose we got 80,000 response sheets. Okay. What we do is I tabulate the data across the three slots. Okay. When you are having 80,000 number, okay, getting the mean and standard deviation of a particular slot, that will be actually pretty accurate. Okay. It will, because from 80,000 to 3 lakhs, it is not going to change quite a lot. And even if it changes quite a lot, it will change similarly across the three slots. So there won't be a lot of difference. Okay, so the mean and standard deviation I calculate from that. Okay, the mean and standard deviation, this one that I use is for all the three slots. Again, it will be the same. Okay, because I am having 80,000 uh, data points across three slots. The variance that you will see will be very, very, very minor. Okay, so I don't have to make any real assumptions there. Okay, the only assumptions I will have to make with respect to scaling is with respect to this constant. Okay, for this constant, uh, I have to figure out what is the difference, how did the toppers do across the three slots and how did the toppers do across our slot. 
For that, I have to figure out who are the toppers. Basically, by toppers, I mean the people who have scored in the 0.01%. Okay. That is the only estimate I have to make. And I make estimates that, okay, out of, say, in uh, 3 lakh people who have taken the examination, 0.1% will be around, say, 300 people. That is across the slots, 100 people. I would make assumptions based on the number of people who have attempted, who have sub uploaded. I make assumptions that, okay, people who have done well, there is a higher chance that they will actually upload as compared to people who did not do well. Okay. So I know that I have to take the top 100. Okay. But I don't take the top 100 because I feel that not all 100 would have uploaded their response sheet. Okay. There I make assumptions that, okay, I would assume that 50 people have uploaded it. Okay. Out of 100. Because if you think about it, the estimate that I'm making is out of 3 lakhs. Okay. Assume that this is 3 lakhs. 83,000 have uploaded. What is this ratio? This ratio comes to approximately 3.5. Right? Across everybody, the ratio is 3.5. But this ratio will not be 3.5 since the start. That is, I can't make an assumption that in the first top 100, 33 people have uploaded. In the first 1000, 330 people have uploaded. I can't make that decision. Okay. Assume that for this lack of, uh, this, assume that this is 3 just for the sake of this explanation. I can't make an assumption that, okay, every time it is flat 3. So what I do is, I keep putting these numbers, that is for 99.9, .9, I know that, okay, I need like 300 people. 99% it is 3000 people. Okay, if I'm trying to figure out. 90 percentile, I have some other understanding. So I feel that, okay, if I'm looking at the top 100, I will put the ratio as say, maybe 2 or something. In the top 1000, I will put the ratio over here as say 2.5. I will keep slowly increasing it such that at around 3 lakhs, this ratio becomes whatever this is, around 3.5 or something. Okay. This is basically, this is basically completely my estimate. Okay. So there is a chance that in percentiles, this will go wrong. Okay. But again, I don't think it will go horribly wrong. Okay. But as far as scaling is concerned, I think scaling will be completely on point because there are very few estimates that I'm actually making. Okay. One more thing that you have to remember, okay, when you are making any video or something, okay. One of the things that you have to remember is, if this is how scaling works, what exactly is the scaling? It is your raw score minus the mean into a constant plus another constant. G is basically the average, which is a constant. This is always the same. Once that paper is done, nobody can change anything. That is the same for all the 3 lakh people. That is the mean of all the scores. Nothing can be changed. This also is a constant. For everybody in slot 1, that G1 is constant. It is the average of everybody. Right? There is no change. Raw score is keeps varying per person, okay, for one person to another person, okay. The only thing I make an estimate is over here. What exactly is this K? What approximation do I make? What I make is how many people in the top 100 would have submitted their response sheet. That is the only estimate that I make. It is a small estimate. It is the same estimate across the three slots. Where even if there is any variance, it gets cancelled because this also is a ratio. I can explain the ratio, but it is too complicated. It is basically a ratio. So even if I'm making some small changes, because they get cancelled out, okay, it is pretty accurate as far as scale score is concerned. Once I get the scale score, all the 83,000 people, I put it in a line, okay, and then I have to figure out, okay, what will be 99 percentile, what will be 98 percentile. For that, what I do is, 19 percentile, I have to pick the guy who is ranked 3,000, correct, overall. But again, I'm making the estimate that, okay, all 3,000 would not have uploaded, surely, okay. So then I make this estimate that, okay, 99 percentile, say if it is 3,000, I will uh, take that ratio as a 2.5. So instead of finding the 3000 guy in my 83,000, I would just say 3000 divided by 2.5, which will be around say 1200. I'll say 99% will be in my list, the 1200 guy. Okay. And I'll continue to slowly increase so that if I'm looking for 3 lakh person, I will go to the 83rd, 83,000 person because 83,000 divided by 3.5 will again come to 3 lakhs. This is roughly what I make. Okay. You understood right? right? If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Okay. One of the things that if you are not able to do all of this, one of the things that you should definitely explain is scaling is like this, which is constant minus G1 into a const, uh, your raw score minus G1 into constant plus G. So basically, if your raw score is very close to G1, okay, then there will be no scaling. Your scaling is basically higher at the extremes, either when you're scoring very high or when you're scoring very low. That is when scaling matters. If you're scoring close to your mean, there will be no effect of scaling. Okay. That is something. Two persons from the same slot will have different. different scaling. Correct. Uh -huh. So ideally, scaling 
is looking at one thing, okay? How much better are you than the average person in your slot? Okay, that is one thing that it looks at.